thanks for coming back. We're getting really close to the end of the beginner series and I'm so proud of you for making it this far. Or if you're new, hi, my name is Ellen and I make guitar tutorials right here on YouTube. And you're currently in the middle of my beginner series, so make sure to click here to start back on episode one. In our last episode, we went over some of my favorite tips and tricks on how to practice and improve on your chord transitions. And today I'll be showing you the rest of the most common open chords on the guitar so we can play through even more songs. So be sure to stick around to the end to figure out what those are. So let's go ahead and grab our guitars and get started. Let's review the chords we learned in our last episode. First we have G. Then we have C. Then there was D. And last was E minor. By the way, these four chords are considered open chords because they use open strings or strings that are not being fretted. Today I'm going to show you the rest of the most common open chords and it's really popular among beginners because they're so frequently used in rhythm guitar. So let's go ahead and zoom in and I'll show you how to play those. So let's go ahead and start with that E minor chord. Remember in our last episode I showed you that you could have different fingerings for E minor, but this is the fingering that I prefer and I'm going to show you why right now. So when you have your E minor fingered this way, all I want you to do is take your pointer finger and place that on the first fret of your G string. That makes your E minor into an E major. All right, so you can see the difference there is just one finger. Now from our E chord, all I want you to do is to take all three of these fingers and move them down one string each. All right, if you play this, that's our A minor chord. So again, you can see that's a pretty easy transition from E to A minor. So now from here, we're going to take our A minor chord and change it into an A chord. And all you want to do for that is take off your pointer finger and then place your pinky finger right next door to all your other fingers on the second fret of the B string. So this is our A major chord. So again, you can see from A minor to A major, we're just replacing our first and our pinky fingers. Something to point out is that A chord is another one of those chords that you'll see people play different ways. The way that I've showed you today is a really common fingering, but if it's more comfortable for you, you can also replace your middle ring and pinky finger with your pointer, middle, and ring finger. This is another common fingering for the A chord. Now the last chord I want to show you today is our D minor chord, but let's build this one up from scratch. As you can see from the chart, we won't be playing the bottom two strings just like we do with our D major chord. Then our fourth D string will be open. Now place your middle finger on the second fret of the G string. Then your ring finger goes on the third fret of the B string. And then finally your pointer finger goes on the first fret of your high E string. This is your D minor chord. Remember not to strum those lowest two strings. And if you're having trouble with that, try this tip. Use your thumb to mute those two strings by gently laying it across them. You don't have to press down too hard for this, just enough so that they're muted. This will also work for any other chord that has muted strings, like C or A. Notice how my thumb barely touches that bottom string just to kind of mute it so that you don't strum it. Wow, look at all these chords you can play. And you might be noticing they're kind of in an alphabetical order. That's because when we're talking about music, our musical alphabet goes from A to G. But you might be wondering, where's B and F? 
Well, those are a little bit more complicated because they're what we call bar chords. And that's not really a beginner skill, but no worries, I am gonna be starting my brand new mini series on how to play bar chords really soon. So make sure to subscribe so you don't miss it. All right guys, it's that time again. Make sure to pause on the next screen and practice memorizing and transitioning between these new chords that we learned today. Be sure to use some of those exercises that we learned in our last episode and keep on practicing with your metronome until you can get up to 110 beats per minute, which is what we'll be using here at the end. We also won't be using our capo this time around and we'll be sticking with that same strumming pattern that we learned in episode four. So when you're ready, let's go ahead and jam. Let's do this. No sunshine when she's just these eight common chords? Go ahead and give it a try. I've got lots of tutorials on my channel that you can play right now. All you have to do is open the description box and click on the link inside there. That will bring you to a list of all the songs that I have and I have everything in there from Green Day to Taylor Swift, so I'm sure you'll find something in there that you'd love to play. Or if you find yourself needing a little extra help, no worries, you can always check out my Patreon page where you can download printable guides, play along with my backing tracks, or even send me videos of how you're playing and what you might be having trouble with, and I'll send you my video response back. Thanks so much for joining me for another episode. If you've made it this far, make sure to leave me a strong arm emoji in the comment section below so I know that you've been here for the whole thing. And if you had fun jamming with me today, make sure to subscribe to my channel, that way you never miss out on another new episode. And now that you know all your basic open chords, we can work on some new strumming patterns. So make sure to join me in the next episode where we'll be discussing rhythm and strumming. And I'll see you over there. Bye.